Right, further investigation on why the battery's the front's not charging has uncovered quite a lot of carnage. Well, good morning. A boat life today. Uh, when we were doing our trip down from Pollington yesterday, the bow thruster seems to have decided it doesn't want to work properly. So, uh, as usual, when you own a boat, boat jobs uh, and possibly more money, of course. Uh, this one's a bit tricky. It's buried in the front of the boat. I'll uh, I'll take you in there and show you. Uh, what's what and then I'll endeavour to try and film what's going on so uh, let's see how we go on okay so we're up at the pointy end of the boat under the cratch on the well deck uh, the source of the trouble is down in this hatch first of all we have to get all this rammel out of it uh, the storage being a premium on a boat whenever you uh, wherever there's a hidey hole it gets full of stuff so the, the culprit is down here, you can see the tube here, which is the bow thruster tube where the water passes through, there's a propeller blade in there, this is the uh, bow thruster battery, I've already checked that, that seems to be good, uh, obviously it's backed up by a fuse and an isolator and a second fuse, and then this is the bow thruster motor, and uh, what we're going to need to do is uh, uh, first of all check the brushes because they're a, a possible culprit but potentially also lift that motor off it's off the tube i'm reasonably confident that the water won't come in however you never know do you we need to have his wits about us but we're going to try and pop that off uh, and just have a good look to see what's going on it is turning so either there's a blockage in the tube or uh, as i said the brushes are a possibility on this motor so uh, I'll pop you down and let's see whether we can get stuck into it. Brushes are going to be hiding under there. Hopefully there isn't a lot of springs in, wires and everything jumps out and lands on me when I pull this cap off. Oh, no, we're all good. Though. So, what do we see? Brushes here. Uh, can't quite tell how long they are. There is a minimum length for them, although to be fair, they don't look bad. Uh, on face value, I reckon that they're probably still long enough. Let uh, me get to have a bit closer dig and I'll come back to you. Right, brushes seem okay at first inspection, so I'm going to try and get the 
motor off and see if there's any tightness in the gearbox or or anything below the waterline now I'm reasonably confident that if I take out these bolts and and uh, lift the motor no water's gonna come in but you never know okay got the bolts out uh, now we need to see whether the motor will come off with a, a riot. Well, indeed it has. Uh, flexible couplings come off too. Okay, well we got the motor off, no water came in. Always a good thing. And feeling at this, there is nothing particularly uh, stiff or difficult about turning that, so I don't think anything's tangled up in the in the propeller or caught in the tube. Uh, so it seems like it must be something to do with our friend here. So uh, now we've got him out, we can have a better inspection and we'll see what's what. Okay, uh, as we said, gearbox seems to be okay, so I have a little look at these brushes uh, and the comb, see if everything looks as it should. Uh, so just popping out the screws that hold the cables in and understanding exactly what's going on there. So there's a little resistor or a thigh resistor or something there on the top one two sets of brushes and brushes in each slot by the seam of things i think we'll just go through check the measurements on them clean them up see if there's anything jumped out of the page it is as being wrong uh, as you can see they've got two terminations on them uh, and then these two springs that sit behind which hold them in place uh, Hopefully there isn't a bang and a crash and everything goes flying all over the place But you never know, so we'll just be a little bit careful like that uh, So there's a spring Double spring by the seam of it that holds on That presses down on the brushes and holds them against the commutator inside there Brushes do look adequate in length, nothing wrong with those. So I think uh, there was a minimum measurement, I'm sure it was 14 millimeters. I shall look it up again in a second. Uh, just having a quick flick through, no signs of any burning on the com. Looks to be all okay in there. keep digging see what we can find so those first two don't look bad to me everything seems to be in situ they're sliding reasonably well up and down the box so theoretically that should be able to go back into there that should be able to go back into this way making sure that we don't lose that metal I rest in whatever it was and just need them back up Mm -hmm. 
First one in. Seems to be an easier way of doing it. Right, I've gone through all of these brushes, uh, I've had them all out and had a look at them, dirty fingers to prove it, uh, and I can't see anything wrong obvious in there, the motor turns alright, uh, brushes are all touching so I, and have adequate length, so I don't think that's the source of our problem. I'm going to go and have another fiddle with the gearbox, but I don't think that was it either. So uh, now we're getting into the realms of not sure and head scratching, but we'll figure it out. Right, after doing further diagnosis, we find that the battery voltage was dropping away and that we weren't getting any charge. And having just investigated here, it looks like we've got short circuits and molten cables and all sorts going on. So I'll do a bit, a bit further digging. Uh, clearly the bow thruster battery is not being charged because of whatever's going on here. Uh, so I'll have a bit of a dig and see if we can get to the bottom of that uh, and come up with a resolution. Right, further investigation on why the battery's the front's not charging has uncovered quite a lot of carnage. Uh, Still haven't got to the bottom of exactly where the cables are going. This one's wandering up there and it's molten the stuff in the engine loom with it. So I'm uh, slowly inching my way along that loom to find out the uh, the location of, uh, of the source of that. Uh, and see what, what repairs we need to do on other cables. Luckily for the most part they've come unscathed. There's a bit of a problem down on this bottom here. But... Uh, and then we'll see whether we can figure out uh, what we need to do to fix it. Okay, wasn't really able to video most of that. Uh, it turned out that we'd got a, a cable that runs between the uh, this alternator and the starter motor that had obviously got overheated and melted, and it had melted into this into this loom, destroying some of the conduit. Uh, luckily, it hadn't burnt through any of the other. Uh, critical cables it had taken out a neutral that have since replaced uh, we seem to be charging on the bow thruster which will cure that problem but I have had to disconnect the charging to the starter battery from this alternator currently um, we may have to uh, revisit it uh, when I get back to the marina so that's what happened with the mysterious near fire in the engine room. Uh, the bow thruster appears to be working all right at the moment. Uh, it was, uh, we still did have a low battery up there. Uh, so I uh, charged it the other week and we haven't really been out yet to test it. Uh, the link uh, to the alternator uh, from the starter battery was removed entirely. It's still out at the moment, so we're not charging the starter battery from the alternator. But luckily we have a Victron unit which does charge the starter battery from the inverter, so uh, we're not having starter battery problems. Uh, and I have created a new cable uh, to replace the one that I've taken out in much thicker cable to match the rest. Uh, I'll put an image up on screen now, which I think is what occurred or what caused the fault it did happen closely after the lithium install but there's no direct link between the lithium batteries and the um, bow thruster and starter battery circuits so I don't believe that's anything to do with it uh, I think for whatever reason we got a low uh, voltage up on the, uh, on the bow thruster bar battery whether that was through lack of charging or overuse on my part it's been quite windy so it could have been uh, and then I think the weak link is this 10mm cable that linked the uh, alternator to the starter battery to provide a, a charging circuit for the starter battery. 
Uh, I've taken that out at the moment so the alternator is only charging the bow thruster battery at the moment. Uh, as I say I don't see that being an issue in the short term and we, we will replace that cable with a, a, a link. Uh, as you can see from the diagram I popped up uh, there is uh, or there was a weak link in that circuit uh, and if a certain set of circumstances occurred then potentially we pulled quite a high current uh, through that cable and I believe that's what's happened. If anybody's got any better ideas or knows uh, or has come across this fault before please mention it in the comments if I've missed something or, or you think you've a better idea. Anyway thanks for watching the video hope it's been interesting it was a bit of a, a chaotic weekend uh, luckily we were able to fix it out on the cut and get back. Uh, hope you've enjoyed the video please like subscribe as I say, comments are always welcome. We like to hear your comments uh, and look forward to seeing you on the next video.